We are talking carry optics today, and this is Can We Chat? This podcast was made possible by our sponsor, FT3, Orange County's premier indoor shooting range, and Pinnacle Firearm Training, CCW, Fundamentals, and Advanced Gun Handling. Live defensively minded. What's going on? My name is Paul G, Chief Safety Officer for the IDPA. This channel will help you clarify IDPA rules, shooting techniques, and inform you of the newest gear and what's going on in the shooting community. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We are back with our team sponsor, my coach, dear friend, and head range manager, Michael Hernandez. Thank you so much for taking care of us today. Always, always. Uh, busy day, I see. A little bit. Had a class this morning, a little lead and coffee, and had a class last night, so it's been uh, two classes back to back. Lead and coffee, my favorite. Lead and coffee was fun today. It was fun. <laughs> it was big. We had uh, uh, 12 people out there, six brand new shooters. They, they just finished the holster qualifier class. It just kind of all plays in. They finished the holster and they came, so they had a... Uh, Introduction to how to run a class today was it was interesting. We had had a few reminders on things, you know, like don't pick up magazines while people are shooting guns, things yeah, like that. Of course, of course, you know, fun stuff. Yeah, it was good. A little bit more <laughs> housekeeping stuff. Yeah, they were good students though, in the sense that they they took the instruction input well and they processed it and did something with it. So, so it was very successful. Then. Very successful. That's oh, always a good fantastic, thing. fantastic. So um, I uh, wanted to bring up uh, carry optics with you, and which is a major thing, especially in IDPA. It's starting to get probably the most popular division out there and uh, i was wondering maybe you can go over some stuff with us sure we can talk about carry optics <laughs> are we talking about when you're talking about carry optics you're talking about a gun that we carry that has an optics on it right? yes okay because i mean a lot of guns have optics on them now it's kind yes. of the way things are going right right most of the manufacturers have decided to actually start cutting their slides for the factory for mounting you notice that i did yeah it's a good thing it's a good um thing. so optics nowadays what exactly is a carry optic or a, a, an optic for uh, pistols well there's there's a lot of choices out there the very first thing we have to there's two things we have to determine number one is it uh actual carry gun like a, a micro or macro carry gun which is going to have a smaller footprint right optic and then a full-size firearm right um in that there's pretty much one mounting method uh, one mounting standard uh, for those optics um, and then there, on full-size guns, you have a couple of different standards. You have the RMR standard, or the right. Trigicon standard, and the Delta Point standard. When you're talking about standards, you're talking about whole um, pattern. Whole patterns. Yep. Okay. So with the Delta Point one, that covers obviously loopholes, Delta Points, and it covers um, some of the uh, Vortex optics. It also covers some of the Sig optics, and it, and it additionally covers uh, the EOTech optics. And then the RMR covers the majority of Holoson, obviously everything Trigicon. Right. Um, so you either get most of the manufacturers will make their slide for one of those two okay. or they'll make an adapter plate or something else. If you're right, right. custom cutting yeah. um, and you're going to do one of those, it's a commitment so because they don't fit once you go the other direction. So milling. Milling. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so if you're going to custom cut yeah. mill it, then you're going to be, well, I'm going to do a Trigicon mount or I'm going to do a Delta point mount. Doesn't mean you have to mount that exact optic, but you do, it does kind of set up your options for what you're going to be able to do. So what platform are you actually using? 99% uh, of the time uh, I use... Well, since I shoot M and P yeah. and minor or core settings, which they have the ability to right. adapt anything, it's a very wide open. So I can mount any optic on there I want because okay. they have adapter plates. So I've run Delta points, which I really like, but 99% of the time I run Trigicons, which are going to be either SROs or uh, my new kind of fancy uh, attraction that I really like is the new HD RMRs. Um, it's uh, halfway between an SRO and a traditional RMR. The window fits right in the little little middle size mm -hmm. you get some new um reticle options on it you get a top load battery which is a huge thing um so the battery top loads just like an sro versus so, versus uh, an rmr which is, is on the bottom so you actually have to demount and so it. you have to take it off take it off oh my gosh now, now to trigicon's uh awesomeness is that they designed this to run forever i mean you can get years out of these okay. batteries okay so it's really not it's just something you you know once every couple of years you do right um you should be doing that anyways because no matter how well you seal, there's still stuff that builds up underneath there. So good servicing of the gun right. would include removing your optic, changing your battery, cleaning everything, remounting it, re-zeroing it, and making sure things haven't changed. Because things change. Your zero is not forever. The optic may hold the exact place that you set it at, but as your barrel wears right. or your ammunition changes, I mean, right. if you change um, carry ammunition, for you say maybe you go from hydroshock to punch or to gold dot, yeah. you're going to need to re-zero because those are going to, they're going to come out of the gun. Different velocities, different, different velocities, drops. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, just fundamentally when it comes to zeroing the gun, um, 
you need to understand that you need to zero the gun for the defensive ammunition you're going to carry. Right. Now, you may not train with that same ammunition. Right. You may train with, say, 115 grain or 120 or 147 grain, something close. So your shot's going to fall in a slightly different place. But don't adjust that zero because, again, you've set that zero up for the use of that defensive ammunition. Well, carry optics uh, versus iron sights, carry optics are a lot more specific. Um, they can be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, versus iron sights, it's uh, <clears throat> somewhere in here. Well, it's still <laughs> somewhere in here with a, with a red dot too, because red dots do have what we call an MOA setting or a minute of angle. Okay. Um, they come in different sizes. Obviously, right. our, our smallest and least popular is the one MOA. 2.5 or that three, that kind of, it depends. Every manufacturer has a little bit different right. variances. Uh, that 2.5 is very popular. It kind of meets a nice middle ground. Right. Now on carry guns, personally, on carry guns, I actually run a 5. I run a 5 MOA. A, a really large A dot. very large dot because so, I want to pick it up fast. And again, I'm at closer distances that my accuracy is really just defensively minded accuracy. Okay, and targets that are beyond 25 yards? I'm still good. I mean, okay. we're talking 5 inches. And with a 3.5 you know, inch right. gun or a 4 inch gun. You just cover them with a dot. Yeah, if they're 25 yards away, I'm probably not going to be engaging them anyways. Uh, okay, all right, you know, good point, good point. You can go another direction. I've got options at 25 yards. Yeah. If I have to, I'm confident in making that body shot. I mean, five inches on a human torso is a big deviation. That's that's right. not something you're going to miss. So when you sit there, you, all you see is dot, and you just want to just... Cover them with that dot okay. and, and go away. Now, it, the ironic thing is, is that we're going to, you know, we go out and we spend all this money on milling or a custom slide or right, even, right, right, even right. a stock slide. And then we spend all this money on a dot. And in a true, uh, probably defensive situation, we're not going to see much of that dot. And it's just, that's just the facts of life. Right. But what dots really help us do is a couple things. They help us train in a more consistent manner because we get a really good presentation level. It's like, it's like iron sights. Iron sights, iron sight shooters were very consistent in their presentation because if you weren't and your sights weren't aligned, right. you didn't shoot well. Right. Um, dots, there is what I call sloppy shooting with dots and there's precision shooting with dots. And we were actually just working on this today. I know, in, I know where you're going with it. You know where I'm going. Yeah, you can, you know, you bring your thing up and right. well, if I move the gun like this, I still yeah. have dot acquisition. Yeah. And you're absolutely right, you do. Yeah. And in certain circumstances, in non-typical positions, maybe I'm on my side, maybe I'm under something, around something, that's gonna benefit me. But for good, consistent presentation, I wanna keep that dot right in the same place spot and move all my the time. entire yes. okay. my entire source around. Yeah, that Not just go, well, I can still see the dot. Oh, because well you watch the shooters today, and so when we're doing this, this is exactly what we're working on, trying to get this out. And they're much slower, because you have to retract the dot, find yeah, things, right. and uh, so it doesn't work very well. So dots are, you know, they're they're not a magic pill that fixes everything. We had some uh, one gentleman out there today, iron sight shooter, uh, been doing that for a long time. Just picked his dot up. He's mm -hmm. been in about a year after talking right. to him today, and he has a lot of initial trouble when he brings that up. He gets a little bit of a wave. And he's trying to find his dot. And <laughs> in class, it's usually a oh, I can't find the dot. You hear this statement. It, right, it actually right, bleeds right. out of them because that's right. what they're thinking really loud. Sometimes right. they verbalize it. I, I'm not yeah. laughing at, at at the uh, shooter. I'm laughing at myself because that's exactly what I, I was chasing. The oh dot. yeah, we worked on that a lot with you. <laughs> I mean, that was <laughs> that was that horrible. was a lot of work to it get him to find the dot. Horrible for me. So um, it, the other thing is, is it takes dots um, from one eye and trying to get you to see it with both eyes. Typically, yes, okay. unless you have some significant uh, right. eye issues, or even cross dominant people. Yeah. Uh, when we have cross dominant shooters, obviously a right hand shooter, left eye dominant. I had one of those today. Yeah. Um, I found them shooting like this, trying to work that to that thing. <laughs> I said, I, You're right, clearly using right. your left eye. I said, Well, I've got a really bad astigmatism, so I can't really see the dot very well. I have the same issue. Right. Um, I had a, a, I'm a right eyed shooter. I'm actually left handed. Um, oh, I, cross dominant. <laughs> well, no, I'm left handed. I shoot right. I'm pretty ambidextrous. Right. I've always shot right handed, but I'm right eye dominant. And my left eye, my astigmatism was terrific. So, I, most of my dots are still stars. I, you know, I've had LASIK and it fixed oh. it. It had fixed it a lot. Okay, but I still have star. I've never actually seen what a red dot looks like. I, I'm assuming they're all round, but I don't see round. I, I see, assume. Yeah, I see kind of eggish. But you just see the light. I see the light. I see kind of an egg shape. So and this actually helps you out more with uh, than iron sights then. Yeah, it was a blessing for you then. Well, it was interesting when I when I had my LASIK done. I actually yeah. my doctor was great, and yeah. I brought a fake gun in. And we set up my my vision in his to, office in his office to pick up where my where my presentation was where my front sight was so my vision actually started at my front sight so my front sight was always sharp I don't recommend this uh, <laughs> <laughs> but okay well, it was you know I mean it's, it's I this is what I do for a living so I wanted my LASIK to be set up that way so my vision started there at the front sight yeah. and then it goes out forever right um, and it was before red dots and then 
my laser was a while ago and then red dots have evolved out so my distance vision is excellent okay uh, which is really helpful for me because obviously red dots were focused on the target we're not focused on the dot and that's really one of the first things that people get hung up on is that they treat the red dot like a front sight so they're looking for the red dot i find new shooters that come in yes they're like i can't find the dot and you see right, them trying right. to focus down on right. the dot it's like no 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 we need to start focusing on the target stay on the target bring the dot into play, bring it up and let it suddenly appear for you. So right, right. Uh, we help them out with that. A couple of ways you can do that. Right. Uh, the simplest thing is that tradition will use this little guy. Yeah. Uh, when you're an iron sight shooter, um, you'd always kind of start with a level presentation and bring that in to keep that sight alignment. Yep. With the dot, you really want to tip down the front just Tipping a little it. bit. Yep, tip down the front. So it allows you uh, As you're coming in, you visual. pick that dot up. Yeah, you get more visual. So now I'm coming in and then, oh, there's my dot, there's my dot. So it's not, you know, we're not way down here. We're just a little bit down and bring that in. It, it helps learning the dot acquiring right. quite a bit faster um because again we're when we level out we're, we're trained brain says hey i want to align these two things well right. my dot is higher than that yeah so i push into those and then i've missed the dot but by dipping that down i eliminate that alignment and i suddenly pick get, that dot up much faster you just got that screen yep uh so we we went out on the range uh, earlier so uh um this is uh michael uh, giving us that lesson on uh finding your dot we're here to talk about acquiring your red dot we see a lot of new shooters coming in, learning how to use red dots, and more importantly, we have a lot of old school iron sight guys that are transitioning over to red dot. Two really key things we need to remember is one, there is a learning curve with red dots, so it does take a little bit of time. It's not the magic pill to solve all your problems. Next thing we wanna think about is what we're actually gonna do with the red dot. Two things, first off, we're shifting our focus now from the front sight to the target. So we're gonna be very target centric on this. We're gonna stare at that target, pick our point of the target we wanna shoot, and then we're gonna change our draw stroke a little bit using this safe gun right here. What I'm gonna talk about is typically when we have iron sights, we're gonna level that gun out as we present on target to get that side alignment. With the red dot, we wanna dip down that front of that target, uh, excuse me, dip down the front of the gun just a tiny bit so that we pick that red dot up sooner. To help accomplish that, we're gonna apply some pressure with our pinky. So if I have pressure with that pinky, I get that down on the gun. So it's a very simple draw. Normally, iron sight draw, level straight out over my eye, and I've got good side alignment on my iron sights, but I did not see my red dot. Red dot situation, I'm staring at the target. I'm gonna center that gun, tip down just a little bit, come right up, and there's my dot. I can make it much faster and much easier for me to do. So let's try that live. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a couple of live fire shots in here, and you're gonna notice the front of the gun's coming down just a little bit, and I can acquire that pretty quickly to go ahead and get on my target. On my target here, I'm looking at a black ball target, so I'm gonna be shooting on the B target today. So I'm gonna focus up on the B target. It's a nice small spot on the target. I'm gonna take my drop, come straight up into my amazing uh, i i'm impressed uh i never thought to uh put the uh, optic first versus the muzzle yeah i was always trying to uh front sight first uh and and when i first started shooting carry optics that was something that i'd always miss i yeah. wouldn't know where it is well it's you know it's it's a philosophical change. I mean, we're going from trying to line three things, a rear, a front, and a target, right. by paying attention to a tiny front sight on a gun. We've got to start level. That is, Here, we're now solely target focused yeah. and a very specific point on that target. That's and we're trying to bring in something optically, wow. which we're really fooling our brain by keeping it to the center of our face now. We're right. moving off our dominant eye, right? Iron sights would be over our dominant eye. Uh, red dot, for the overwhelming majority of shooters, we're gonna be in the center of our face. So we're getting that stereo optic view. We're trying right. to see around and through that dot. Right. Um, one of those things, if you're having trouble doing that, you can practice is you can always take and take your dot and put some black tape or some tape over it. Right. I've seen people do this. Uh, quite a few yeah. trying to um, retrain their, their... Retrain their eyes to see that stereo. Okay. So what you're doing is because I can't see through anymore, Yes. my eye sees around, but my brain still picks the dot up. So I'm still getting good alignment. I'm still seeing the dot just fine. And people right. freak out because then they, they stare through and they're like, I can't see through it, but right. the dot's right there and it's on target. Your brain will play the perfect picture right. for you. So you're actually bringing in the peripherals. Yep. Right. So in that, and you're putting them together. Retrain the brain. Okay. Because right. again, you remember, you know, if you're coming again from iron sights, you might have been a single eyed shooter right. initially. Um, or if you have any type of vision issue. So it doesn't work for everybody, right. but for the overwhelming majority of people, it's a good way to get kind of trained up on it and get going. Right. And if you can relax that eye, it's almost like those funky 3D puzzles. Yes. If you relax your eyes right. enough, you start to see the image. Right. It's that same process with a red dot. Relax those eyes, stare at that right. uh, target, bring that dot into play, and suddenly it'll appear. So you're just increasing your field of vision, and now you're bringing them the whole Correct. part of your brain instead of just a 
small right. part. And then I've also, I've also found yeah. with my experience yeah. too, when we have cross dominant shooters, again, <laughs> let's go back to a right handed person with a okay. left eye. Right. It, it's very beneficial for them that they may not be able to achieve this because of their overwhelming dominance. We always find that when we have a cross dominant, the eye is very dominant. Yeah. Um, so instead of trying to get the head tilted, we just roll the gun over and suddenly they're using more of their left eye, even with the red dot system, and it works much, much better for them. It's traditional what we do with, with iron sights, roll the gun into play, getting that sight, eliminating the parallax. Unfortunately, what's happening is, if you go back to iron sights with a cross dominant shooter, right. our brain's lying to us. Oh. It's telling us that, oh, your sight picture's perfect, but really, because you have the gun here, you're shooting like this. Right, it just doesn't right. know what it's looking at yet. Right, Yeah. so we, we help it out by giving an alignment. Well, we can do the same thing with the red dot and it simplifies those cross dominant because so, they have that same issue right. even though it's center of their face. So you're just getting your nose out of the way and just canting it Correct. to, oh, fascinating. That works very well out to 10 yards, after 10 yards, typically. <laughs> okay. It's, well, what, what's gonna happen, right? Right. Be from zero to 10, we don't have enough rise out of the round yet. So right. again, we're now tilting, so we're rising this direction. Yes. So after 10 yards, we are gonna have to shift over just a little bit to the right. Otherwise, not you much, go you're just gonna be just off to the left a bit on most of your the shots. guy's right yep. shoulder, right? But we're not talking, <laughs> you know, we're talking that much of a shift. Yeah, but, but you're getting like 15, 20 yards, now you can throw it off of the target, right? About an inch. So, yeah, oh, yep. wow, yep. that much. Yep, because so, again, you're getting into the, you're not getting into the rise of the, of right. the round at that point. And that brings you back to going to the range and Finding your zero. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Now, just remember, you're, you're, you'll get a little less accurate of a zero if you are going to camp the gun because we don't get diagonal adjustments. We right. can only go this way, so we're working against that just a little bit. But you have to remember, too, how you're zeroing the gun. You know, if you're placing the gun down, putting in an amount, and zeroing it up, you're going to get a phenomenal zero right. in that condition. As soon as you pick the gun up, that goes away. Right. So if you want the best zero, start there. I am an advocate of the fact that you should zero the gun the way you shoot the gun um, because that's going to meet your needs the best. Right. So instead of on a, um, a brace or a perch or something right. like that, more... Hold the gun. Yeah. Because I don't shoot from that position, right? When I brace a gun and you have to get down behind it, you're actually in a completely different alignment position than you would be if you were standing there holding the gun. Oh, yeah. So shoot the gun. Zero it the way you're going to shoot the gun. Yeah. Um, use the ammunition that you're going to zero the most. And, you know, there's small deviations between most ammo, but if it's a carry gun, again use that defensive ammunition, zero it off of that, right. and then just let the rest of the stuff fall where it falls. Wow, that's golden, that's golden. Um, let's, get, let's get into the models. I mean, there's so sure. many um, optics out there nowadays. Yeah, it's uh, overwhelming. So, I mean. It's exploded. So as a new shooter, I mean, where would they start? Is there something better than the other or? Well, um, you, you have to, you, as a new shooter, you're probably rather budget conscious at this point. You spend a lot of money on guns and ammo. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, that's always like top of the. the and there, list, right? are, there are there are some, there are as in anything, we're always going to find uh, very price attractive optics yeah. that are out there. Right. And for most people, less price attractive optics. But we do get as we go up that scale in price, yeah. you do get a better optic. Now there is a great argument to be made that when you get to the really high end scale, maybe you're not getting as many features. And really what differentiates the future rich market in the middle and the high end market is gonna be longevity and robustness. Okay. Okay. And specifically we're to be talking something like a Trigicon, right? If you if you look at just a standard Trigicon RMR, which has been the benchmark forever, indestructible optic. The RMR. Um, this guy right here, standard RMR. Okay. So, so this, this um, kind of really started it all. Square face. Square um, face. Small window. Small window. Um, yep. but they're indestructible and pretty much indestructible. Huge battery life. Huge battery life downside is the battery mounts on the bottom, so you do have to remove it. Okay. Um, and ninety nine percent of the guns are ninety nine percent of the guns are, are cut for this. So they go they go right on. Why do you think that is? Uh, because it was Trigicon and you, you, you put this in the military, you put these into the police, you make it a popular thing, the and manufacturer's gonna follow suit. Did, uh, there you go. Yeah. And then companies came along like Holosan yeah. that said, Hey, if we want to mount on everybody, let's use the same hole pattern. This is the 507? So this is a standard 507. It's okay. actually a very similar sized right. optic. You can see they're they're about the same size. And they, and the, they started the, utilizing solar, which helps to trickle charge? Yeah, it, it works if your battery dies. Uh, right. You can use it outside in, in solar. It doesn't charge your battery. Holosan does make a pure solar version. Uh, there's no battery and it, it runs off of just about any type of light source. I haven't ever seen those. So if you tuck it away in your uh, safe bag, it has a little internal battery that kind of holds okay. the charge. All right. Um, Trigicon also made a, a non-battered version too that had a, a top on it that right. used both um, 
uh, iridium or some other glowing right. to plus the light that right. added. So the whole sun's come along. What they do is they did a side mount battery. So you've got a side mount battery. Plus you've got the... Slide in, slide out. Yep, slide yeah, in, slide right. out. Plus you have the option, the fact that they have multiple reticles. That's kind of been the big hot ticket now. So we went from just a single dot to... To halos. Everybody's to... kind of adapted the EOTech okay. ring. Yeah. Um, so they got that, maybe the ring, the ring with the dot. Uh, uh, I've seen triangles. I think I've less seen, is more for yeah, me, right? I've seen bees. I've seen all yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. You know, it... it kind of depends on the application personally uh like holdovers is that what you're well, talking about or holdovers well not so much extent but say uh I, I happen to run um on a rifle i run a uh a trigicon hd right one of the new trigicons right and i keep that on the the ring not the dot so i've got a scope on the top and i've got it off on an offset right the ring works great because again i'm shooting a close long target as, it, as long as it's in the ring it's in the ring it's up close it's not shooting distance Go. yeah then and that's a fast acquisition plus it takes me a visual difference between looking through the scope right and then moving to that so i, I kind of want that visual difference and it's just a ring put the ring on it right and hit my target and i i know that um because on on my my PCC, I have uh, the Halo, right? And uh, I know that I have a certain uh, MOA between the two, the space. So I can always manipulate that, go mm -hmm. above it or below it, and I know exactly where it's going to hit. Yeah. So that always gives me more. But, uh, I mean, that's more to, to think about, right? Especially on the move. Uh, yes, yeah, so you want to keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. I'm always a person <laughs> for keeping it simple. Less, less calculation, right? Less, less, calculations. less algebra, the better. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you want it simple, put the ring up and just go, hey, put the ring on whatever you're going to hit, and, and you're going to hit. If you want to be more precise, then yeah. you know, put it up. But it's not going to be something you're going to be switching on the fly. You're not going to be pressing buttons no. to uh, switch <laughs> on the fly to go, hang on, that guy's moved away. Let me let me dial up the dot. Right. So you kind of pick it and commit it right. um, and just run with it. It's not something that it's like I do Got one it. or the other. Got it. On regular pistol shooting, I really prefer dots. I like dots. They're clean. They're simple. I don't want a lot of distraction. I yeah. just I get that glimmer of a dot. But now when I shoot rifle, I love my EOTech with this big ring. I mean, it's just I know what I'm doing. I've got the holdovers built into it. So it makes sense for me that if I'm running typically an EOTech or a scope that's similar, then I roll over. I've got that same setup. So would, it keeps it would you get um, a lot of change from uh, well, I know rifles, you got a lot of holdovers and so forth. But if you're getting into pistols and so forth, I mean, does that halo actually benefit you more or well, i mean uh, again you you can but at the distances that that would make a significant difference i'd be using a rifle anyways so i mean you know i mean realistically anything if, if you set your you know i like to zero handguns at 15 right. yards yeah puts me, me in a really good really good spot yeah. so if you're shooting at 25 yards which is 10 more yards yeah it's Two we're inches. talking two inches. Two inches. Two yeah. inches is a differential. <laughs> just to aim so, two inches higher. <laughs> yeah, aim two inches higher, or, or don't worry about aiming at all and just shoot, and you're going to be, you know, two inches in the same area that you were before. Right. Right. So, and your follow-up shot's going to be somewhere in the middle of that. <laughs> so, it doesn't. I don't see these huge differences to take the time on a pistol. It's difficult enough to shoot a pistol. Why add complication to it? I, so I think we're agreeing that uh, let's <laughs> let's just not keep this complicated right let's just keep, it, keep simple. it simple yeah very simple yeah, i mean even uh so if you get into carry optics like this is a very popular one uh this is actually on a uh, sitting on a shield uh mmp shield slide this is a holoson uh, eps carry so right. it's a smaller footprint that's one of the, the one of earlier newer ones yeah okay yeah so it's a smaller footprint obviously here's an typical rmr footprint and then here's the little carry footprint so we can see it's quite a bit smaller yes um so they're they're trying to evolve. the downside is right. a tiny little window so you got a much smaller Very, window right um, but you know, i almost, like that optic first mm -hmm. right and uh, optic first you get going you know it's it's also what i like about this too is that in class that we teach red dot we turn our dots off in red class and we teach you how to shoot right through the reticle you've got the window let's right. use that as our targeting device so worst case scenario i don't happen to have uh, suppressor height sights i don't have any co-witness i don't have my batteries dead um, I can still hit the target just fine. We, we teach you how to shoot just using that screen on the target right. all the way out to 10 yards. Uh, accurate TJ hits. always taught me uh, well, shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, align your shoulders with their shoulders. It's going to shoot level, right? Yeah. And that's that's the way that I, I, I learned from him. I didn't believe him at the time, but we yeah. went out to like 40 yards. Yeah. And I'm like, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, before, I, before Red Dots, the way that I taught point shooting was the back of the gun because this is where our muzzle is. Right. Right. So if you cover the, the target with the back of the gun where you want to hit, yeah, you're going to hit as long as you don't see left or right of the, the slide, you're going to hit. You're straight. Just cover that. And you're done. So bring the gun up that covers the target and you hit. 
And we, you guys are getting this for free. <laughs> yeah, this is totally free. Um, but like anything on YouTube, you yeah. have to come to class to get how it actually works. Yeah, this just, is true. This, this is true. This is just the toppings. Right. Um, so now with red dots, we've got this really nice box that has a left, right edge, high, left. And it's just you get your target centered in there. It's all And lined. you're going to pound on them. Oh, yeah. Because most likely you're never going to see that little dot. But right. If you can see through there and get your target squared in there, you're good to go at three, five, and seven. I minutes. understand IEPA is a little bit more specific and so forth, but uh, this definitely gets you right in the uh, the vicinity, right? Mm-hmm. So you're I'm mean, you're ha- you're like eighty percent there. All you just need to fine tune, and you're all set. Well, yeah. I mean, as a as a fair and full disclaimer, I'm a defensive shooter. I yeah. mean, I teach people how to right. bend themselves, and I teach to a point. I help competition shooters right. move faster. Right. But Which I'm I appreciate. Not Thank a, you. You're welcome. But I, I'm not necessarily a, a full-fledged competition shooter. It's, it's I, I look at things slightly differently. I so, love competition. I think it's wonderful because it teaches, I think, really good tactical ideas and right. really good situational awareness. So right. I'm very pro-competition. I wish I had more personal time to go shoot it. Uh, but well, I spend I most of my time, all my free time spent here with Paul. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I appreciate that. You're welcome. So three years ago when I first started um, uh, shooting carry optics, I used an SRO. Yep. So um, I noticed that they're not even like the top five most popular uh, uh, optics out there. Do you Which know- is a shame because it's a phenomenal optic. It, it, I think two things happen. Um, because of its design, you can see that it's got this bit of a hangover. So there are some guns that it hangs over in and it gets this nasty habit. Depending on how your gun's set up, you'll actually build up this big carbon stalactite right there. <laughs> okay. You have to, you have to oh. clean it occasionally. <laughs> Um, well, I don't clean mine anyway, so it's just one piece now. So. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, Trigicon, is, is, as much as I love Trigicon, and I'm certainly not knocking them anyway, they were kind of, they were really slow. They came up with multiple versions of their RMR. Yeah. They sat on that for a very long time, and eventually they said, hey, we got the SRO, which is a huge change, because, I mean, just look at the right. size difference. So you have a much more vertical space with this rounder face for, like, I run an SRO on a shotgun because it just, it stays within the recoil, so it's phenomenal. Um, I love it on competition guns, because, again, with my recoil, pattern right it stays in there i don't right. lose anything yeah so it works very well for that um top load battery efficient nice but it only does a dot and a lot of shooters especially new to red dots or new to the injury love the stuff right they love all the add-ons and it's not a bad thing oh, it man. sells stuff yeah but it doesn't have any reticle options and for the price and for the price and the availability and the availability oh, okay it, you know it's, it's we... a hard it's a hard site to come by um, they are expensive. We were talking about seven hundred dollars, six hundred to seven hundred dollars site. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, so it is. But would I not use one? No, absolutely not. I love these. And yeah. you know, there's been claims of hey, they they're not very robust. I've got one. The entire side is pure aluminum because I've just it's been <laughs> used so much and it works just fine. Um, as with any product that made by any manufacturer, there's always issues with with products. Right. Right. Um, but if given a choice between this. Or something else. Right. My only two optics that the three optics that I love the most are SROs. Yeah, I'm really beginning to appreciate and enjoy the new Trigicon HDs. I'm not a fan of the RCRs because it's it's the same size. It's just right, sealed, right. Um, too small. The Trigicon HD I think hits a really nice midway point, and then um, obviously for rifles EOTEX. And if I had to pick a third red dot, that would be a Delta Point. Delta Point. I do like the Delta Points a lot. Because um, you can move it around. You, well, right? a couple things. What's nice about it is they yeah. do make, this one's actually set up with, they make an accessory rear sight. Oh, uh, because the already Delta, on it. Already on it. Uh, Delta Points are relatively thick, so there's almost no suppressor height sights that'll work with the Delta Point. So right. if you really have to maintain your rear sight, you can add right. one. But what I like about it, it has a very wide field of view. It's not square. It's got a nice wide field of view. It's got a good feel to it. What I don't like about it is that there's only one button. Um, so if you want to change any settings on it, you've got to go like to brightness or lower, you have oh, to yeah, go to the click, whole cycle. Da, 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 oh, and it's, okay. and you're, it's kind of, they're like, well, use a pen because your finger, when you go in there, obviously you can't see it. So other than that, it's great on, I like it on rifles. Um, I like it on a lot of things. I ran it on a handgun for quite a while, but I always kind of go back to the SRO, the SRO or the new Trigicon HDs if you can get your hands on one, which is, which is a miracle at best right now. They're oh, one I of see. the hardest wow, sites in the world. Really? I, I've been able to acquire one and they're very nice does ft3 have them in we do we actually had uh, a couple in stock the other day uh they blew out really quick boom they come in they go out i've got several more in order we do currently have um 
a Trijicon RCR yeah. uh, on hand. We got two of those in. We sold one. Oh, okay. Um, so those are, and that's got that really unique mounting system. Yes, right. They right, use right. the same pattern. So I do give it to Trijicon that they're coming up with new sites and they're maintaining the same pattern. Do you um, um, have any issues with uh, shooting in different lights, like uh, out in the really extremely bright sunlight versus the indoor no light or low light? Uh, no, that's why there's brightness adjustments on them or auto mode of, of course but i'm just worrying about the uh, actually visualizing your dot sometimes the sunlight can like drown it out and you can't see it well again um if you can't see it i've still got the target inside what i'm looking so at you can see. and i can right. still hit it right, i don't right. need the dot to hit things what okay. dots do for me is they they reconfirm my accuracy yeah. on the target they, they give me that extra boost of confidence that hey i'm on the target my yeah. gun's aligned Two, they give me a good follow-up shot because it falls back oh, to yeah. where I want, so yeah. it's really quick to confirm. As long as I can see that dot, it's somewhere on the uh, target. And um, I think it, it opens up the depth for having visual issues, you know, because <laughs> you and I are both well over 40. Uh, so, you know, we wear the readers when we're looking at everything else in life. And, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Yeah. So, you know, but sh being, able to stare at a, being able to stare at a target is easy. So unless unless you've got an issue where you can't see targets at distance, yeah. um, then the red dots going to help things out. So for right. as we get older, red dots are actually very beneficial for right, older right. eyes. And I think starting new shooters on red dots is actually a really good way to go because it's inevitable. I mean, a couple of years ago, no, I wouldn't have started new shooters on red dots. I still train them on iron sights. Yeah. Here at FT3, almost we're trying to get all of our rental guns on red dots. Um, just really? So, yeah, just because it's pretty much it's. What's happening? It's not going to change. They become so reliable. I have it's no true. qualms today to say I would carry red dot every day of the week. I mean, I do. I carry on my standard carry, which is typically a, a compact. Right. Um, I have an RMR. On both of my major compacts, I have RMRs. That's where they sit. I'd like to carry an SRO on them, but I don't for two key reasons. One, I carry appendix, and it's just a little bit bigger than is comfortable. Yeah. It's not much, but it's enough that it makes it a little bit more comfortable. Um, so I try to keep my carries as slim as I can. So I have no problem with an RMR. Oh, I train okay. a lot with it. Okay, but that's, that makes the a lot main, that's the only main reason is that it's a size issue. Uh, from that standpoint, I like it a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit easier. Um, plus, is you know, I'm a little softer, so it's nice to have something that's, you know, that kind of pokes me a little bit, to be honest. Uh, by the time you put a light and a gun, and I mean, you know, you're carrying a compact gun. I've got a sure. four and a quarter inch slide on it. You've right, got a light right, right. on it. You, you the don't be... fine. <laughs> okay. Do you have any problems uh, keeping the uh, uh, lens clean? You know, that, that's funny. That, that comes up a lot. Hey, sealed, right? Oh, let's seal them up. It'll yeah. prevent. I, I think personally, this is this is my take, 100% my opinion. One of the greatest marketing things in the world because now I need a new red dot because this one's different than this one. Um, I have shot red dots, carried red dots for years now, and I've shot them in the rain, the snow, the mud, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. We actually did a class... I think in December up at Burrow, it was raining the whole time. It was a rain right, shoot. Right, right. Great class. Ton of That's fun. That's the biggest test. Shooting oh, yeah. Rain. You shoot a red dot. And I was running a um, RMR because I yeah. was shooting my compact carry. No issues. Yeah, you get water on it. But if now I've got two lenses to get water on. I've got the front <laughs> and the back. So if you imagine it sitting here, this is just going to hold water. This gets water on it too, but you had to learn to shoot through that. And again, if you're staring at the target, right. it shouldn't be an issue for you. No. So, And I've never had... An emitter, which is buried way back in here, all these little lasers. Right, which get, is a, get like a projection. So yeah, it's a laser LED projector yeah. um, that's bouncing off the internal glass here. Okay. It's not holographic, right. like an EOTech. It just um, reflection, sure. But it's buried way in there. So, and again, you have to imagine when it's sitting in your holster, it's this way. So, if anything, I'm going to get material there. Uh -huh. And when you bring the gun up on the first cycle, that material's gone. Yeah. So, it, do I use these? Yeah, I've got a gun with a carry because I try to test everything. Right. So, whatever people are doing. For class wise i will put on a gun and try it and run it i don't see any benefit um from a visual standpoint or from a performance standpoint between this or an open emitter it's like it's a closed emitter open emitter right um it's for some people it may be just the perfect use case for mm -hmm. others i don't know so in my personal experiences open emitter closed emitter doesn't matter to me the larger full-size gun closed emitters i don't particularly like they feel very confining ah uh, when you look through them yeah, they're, right, they're right, usually right. very small they yeah. feel very very Claustroph confining claustrophobic, claustrophobic. Yeah, Excellent. yeah absolutely and that i don't particularly like i right. i like a minimal profile that gets out of my way visually so all i'm really seeing is dot i would have to frame. agree i i think i i would uh, feel the same way uh holster did you have to change anything with your holsters or well uh, i did have to eventually buy some holsters that allow red dots there because i'll you know uh, a little bit uh a little wider more opening at the yeah at the there's front. a cut down okay a bit okay. More. okay 
you know, you do run into some issues depending, uh, again, with something like the SRO. You have to make sure that holster is going to work with it because it does sit forward quite a bit more yeah. than a normal red dot. Yeah. Same thing with the new Trigicon HD. It sits forward. Um, it's got that same forward kind of profile. Um, so sometimes you run into that. I, I ran into that with um, a couple of holsters that I had, but, you know, nothing a Dremel couldn't fix. So where are the, the new shooters, where where do they begin when they uh, start looking for a, a, a new optic? Or Well, this optic? happens a lot here at FT3. People see the optics and, and go, they, they have a brand new gun. Well, they see it on you. Well, we have, we have a great display. <laughs> nobody, I'm up here. Nobody pays attention to what I do. I nobody, do. Nobody, well, you do. But, you know. Uh, I always look at all the new and, and fun toys that you come out with. Well, you know, I and I don't always use them all, but I really, I think as an instructor, it's important that you try things and test things because you're going to get somebody in class. You have to. I want to have the answer for it. Right. And plus, I want to see if it's viable or not. Right. Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Right. So, uh, yeah, I've got a... I have buckets of stuff at home that I just, <laughs> I will never use again. You know, I mean, gear wise, it, you know, because somebody asked me, that we're in a rifle class. Well, your rifle always changes. I'm like, yeah, because I'm always trying. I have a right. rifle that I, is my one jerk. I have one rifle that I have set up, just it's never going to change. Right. Unless I really like this component, then I'll put yeah. it on there. But I have a rifle that I use here all the time that I change all the stuff. I'm always changing grips. I'm always changing yeah. buttstocks. I'm changing this and that. Because, you know, it's people come to me, here, try this for me or try this. So I'm always trying to, trying to change things and see if I can find that much better degree of performance out of it yeah and it always comes down to no not really you, if you no. find something that <laughs> you find something you really like right and it works there's probably not something better out there there might be something different and it's it's uh i find that it's like oh this is kind of cool uniqueness so you have that unique factor for right. a little bit but then you go well now i'm having to make it as soon as i have to make an adjustment for that new piece of gear yeah it's done for me because i don't want to have to relearn something we actually had this in class last night at uh one of my guys there is excellent uh, police officer, great mm -hmm. guy, really fun. He was running a extended height um, mount for his optic, and he was struggling really a lot last night. Okay. So we talked about it. He goes, well, this is the first time I've run that. All my other stuff is traditional one-third. I said, well, you have a choice to make. You either convert everything over right. to uh, higher height or you stick with your one-third. He goes, I'm sticking with one-third. He goes, I know the benefits of higher height. Right. There's a lot of benefits to it, but he'd have to change everything and then, that consistency needs and to how be long would it take him to do that right a so, while yeah it'd be yeah. a huge investment financially oh, oh absolutely I mean, number one and there's retraining because he was oh, he was uh, not trained up for that so yeah. you know and it took us down that course of consistency right so i have because i carry red dots on a couple of my carry guns i put red dots on all of my carry guns because i want to treat them the same right um so i have consistency when i'm pulling a gun out uh, from a, for a defensive thing, I don't want to be like uh, iron sights or red dot. What am I doing? There's no <laughs> no time to retrain. There's no time to retrain. Well, let me warm up. Hold on. One second. Yeah. I mean, I have guns that still have iron sights on them because right. I still enjoy that practice of and that discipline of shooting iron sights. Yeah, uh, it's fun to go and do that still. But I'm fully committed to red dots. I think they're phenomenal. They're wonderful and they're great. So everything I, I run, I run red dots because I want that consistency. Yeah, I'm not going to be bouncing around from you know. I see people. Uh, especially in carry, uh, when we do renewals, I'll see people's list of guns. And it shocks me that, I mean, they'll have six or seven guns on there, and they're all completely different. Oh, I mean, they'll have a 1911 style gun. Right. They'll have a uh, 229 yeah. with a decocker. Uh, maybe they'll have a uh, Glock. Yeah. And then they'll have a 320, and they'll have a 365, and then maybe right. they'll have a, a Ruger on there someplace. I mean, it's just this, this bevy of firearms. And... <laughs> I can understand some people may want to do that because, well, that's all the guns I own, so I want to be able to have them available to me. I get that 100%. Uh, but what really worries me is that you don't shoot with all of those all the time. Right. I always tell students that if you're going to change guns, shoot a gun. If you're going to come to classes regularly, for instance, try to shoot that gun for the entire month. Don't come to every other every class and change your gun because you're really burning consistency time. Sure. You're not getting things in. So shoot it for a month, get comfortable with it, and then go try and change your gun. And shoot that one for a month but you're going to find unless the guns are very similar um, you're going to have some issues yeah so when it comes to carry i try to be as consistent as i can i have one brand of carry the guns are all very similar the triggers are similar the capacities are similar they all have red dots because i don't want to have that secondary thought when i pull a gun in a defensive situation right what's in my hand right so 
and I think that should go across the board for competition. That should go across the board for a lot of things. You, so you, you can see where, where my philosophy actually came from. <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> and that's why I shot Bug for a year, and, and now I'm shooting uh, CCP, but it's with the same gun. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, well uh, SK, right? HK uh, 2000 SK, and then just the 2000, right? But it's the same. Same additional. Yeah, I mean. Just one's bigger. Yeah, there's there's very little difference between shooting a, a, a uh, MMP compact and a yeah. Shield Plus, right? They're they're you know they're right. about the same here in California. Right. The capacity is yeah, the same. Right, right, We're right. both ten rounds, so yeah. I can't lose there. But you know, barrel length is not a determining factor for anything. It should not be a determining factor for accuracy or anything be. else. No, I thought it would be, and you're absolutely right. It's not. No, the only thing it really does determine is velocity. Um, this is true. But if you shoot the right ammunition uh, in a carry gun for yeah. shorter barrels, like a Federal HST, which is designed for for four to three inch barrels, yeah, you're you're getting everything out of it. If you're shooting some other stuff, test it if you can. Find a way to test it. But you may not be getting the same velocity out of that. Right. Obviously, a longer barrel. Now, to be specific, yes, longer barrels over longer distances okay. are more accurate. Right. But However, for practical purposes, right, especially right. when we're talking about carry today, yeah. there's no difference between a 3-inch or a 3.3-inch shield or whatever it is and a 4 and a 4 and a quarter. It's just there's no practical purpose difference. It's going to be going to come down to partially comfort. Right. Oh um, yeah. You know. Absolutely. Trying trying to conceal a five sure. five inch gun. That's. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, it's that like, takes talent. It's much easier to conceal a, a, a shield plus of the three inch barrel than it is to conceal a compact with right. a four and a quarter. Especially I mean, it's just especially my like my PCC. That's kind of tough to hide too. Yeah. <laughs> so those baggy pants. When you're wearing the baggy pants, I know you got the PCC. So would you? I are you? Would you say? I mean, uh, change, uh, uh, change or die? Or no, I don't think or? it's a change or die situation at all. It, they're. Uh, I don't like drawing lines in the sand like that. Okay. Um, because every individual is different. Some right. people uh, just, you know, they do address that in some ways. Let's talk about eye issues. Um, there are green green dots out there yes and some people obviously are, are right. color Colorblind. sensitive yeah. Oh, yeah. so green works much yeah, better yeah. for right. them um i like the green ones i like the red ones i don't have a particular issue either way i'll shoot either one i like them both the only time i run into green issues is if you're in a really heavy foliage area i mean it's practical green on green's a little tougher right um but so there are people out there you do have issues with astigmatism so again if you right. do have issues with astigmatism test out your dots um i remember back when i was trying to find something for the rifle um and I wanted to try something other than EOTech. The only thing I could find was the uh, Trigicon MRO. The way they projected the dot in that had the least amount of flare on any other red dot I tried. Okay. Excellent red dot. Can't put it on a gun. So flares uh, usually um, it's the a starburst, the fuzzing, the yeah. fuzziness around the, uh, the the ring or well, the dot. Well, you'll get right? you'll get on some dots if you obviously brighten them all the way up. Right. You're gonna get that that right. halo effect. Right. Because the it, you're getting the glare off the actual glass because yeah. you're projecting on the glass. So the glass properties start to fall out depending on how good okay. of glass properties you have. But with people with astigmatism, uh, basically what that is is their their eye is, is not perfectly round. Right. So they the light comes in kind of distorted. So they'll see anything from egg yes. shapes to oval shapes, or they may get a lot more starring pattern. So if you drive at night and you see star patterns off the headlights, you probably have a little bit of astigmatism. Sure. And things aren't totally round for you. Right. Um, then you have a little bit of astigmatism. And red dots can affect that. You'll see an off pattern. Like, I don't see a dot. I see kind of an oval shape. Right. And depending on how bright it is, I see a really bright area and a dim one. And I've learned that the bright area is where I put on the target, and that's where I hit. If I use the <laughs> dim part, I don't hit anything. So um, not everybody can run a red dot successfully but yeah. maybe the circle works better for you because it's not as defined that so makes sense that might be a reason that you may need to look at trying one with an alternate reticle like a halo yeah the halo Absolute, will work that a little totally bit better makes sense absolutely or there's a couple out there that that have a triangle uh, in them so look at different options that are going to work best for your vision understand if you're our cross dominant shooter that even though you have a red dot the 2i function may not work for you or even if you're just a, a person who's not cross dominant but you have eye issues maybe you've wear glasses and one setup for distance and one setup for close up a lot of people yeah. have mono vision or they've had lasik to do that or their contacts to do that the 2i system's not going to work for you you can still use a red dot but you're going to do it in a more traditional way over the single eye that's set up for the distance you can use that distance vision to do that your your brain is gonna have a lot of trouble adjusting if you're used to having close up here and distance here and trying to get that dot to work you're gonna do a lot of headaches oh um, man to, to do that, <laughs> that so that is insane so you do have to take those into consideration um for anything when you come to shooting you know, of not course. everybody is 
2020 vision, perfect eyesight, uh, everything else, you always have to take into consideration the, the person you're working with and, and their physical limitations. So that, that would be uh, where we probably end here. That's exactly what you need. Uh, what is uh, the right optic for you? Uh, that's probably where you should begin. Yeah. Uh, uh, a uh, proper uh, examination by optometrist would be a, a great start as well if uh, so. they have some eye issues. But uh, uh, Michael Hernandez is always available here to answer any of your questions. Uh, you can always uh, drop a line, uh, put it into the comments, and I'll be more than happy to take your uh, questions as well. But uh, uh, thank you very much for your time. I You're appreciate welcome. it. Uh, so a special shout out to our channel membership. This is your support busy at work. Please consider being a part of our shooting community, building relationships around safe gun practice and IDPA competition. My name is Paul G and this is Michael Hernandez with FT3. Please be safe and we'll see you on the range. Like, share, subscribe.